Hello everybody, I hope you're all well. We have just had the most enormous hailstorm. It's gone really cold, so I've got the pink woolly out again. I keep on washing it and putting it away, <laughs> ready for next winter. And then I go and grab it and get it back out again. But, um, and I've got a bit of a cold, so I apologize for the nasal sound. But apart from that, everything is good. So if you saw my last video, you will see how I was inspired to create the Midnight Garden Quilt. And in my last video, I made blocks A and B. And that is block A and B. So block A is the one on the top right. And there is one of those that sits in the center of the quilt and in the bottom left, that is block B and there are four of those and today I'm going to start making the ones that fit around block A and between block B. And this video for this week is block C and D and I'll show you how we made those. But before we get on to that I'm just going to mention upside down blocks. <laughs> We've all done it. I've done it and videoed it to the nation and some of you kindly spotted it and told me so I'm glad you did. I haven't yet joined any of the blocks together so if I had of um, <laughs> it would have been a bigger thing to unpick than it was. So let's have a look at those blocks see if you can see them. Can you see it? There it is. And there it isn't. And now I can start today's work. Actually, there were two blocks that I'd sewn incorrectly. The other one was one of the little flower buds that was in the top left hand corner. So it's the very top block. And I put that in at a tilt. But I saw that one and unpicked that one and put that one in. And so everything is okay at the moment. I'm sure I'll do it again, but I'll just unpick it and carry on regardless. So I'll show you now the settings for block A and B from last week and then we can move on to block C and I'll show you how that fits. And that's my design plan for blocks A and B and now I'm going to fill in these gaps with block C. So again if you saw last week's video you'll see that I am approaching the designing of this quilt in a slightly different way. Usually when I design a quilt I use grass paper and then I design the whole quilt and then I make the blocks and sew it all together. This time I am designing one block, making that and then I'm looking at that block, designing the next block to see how things will just fit around each other and how the fabrics work together. I've got to say, <laughs> it is time consuming this way and I am making surplus blocks. So I'm not sure if I'll do it this way again. Um, we'll see. That's a little bit of a heads up for what's about to come. And this is block C. So it's six squares wide and eight squares deep. And I'm going to construct it in four parts. So first of all, there's going to be an on point square in the center. Then that will have a ring around, a ring around that. And then there'll just be two edges on the top and the bottom. And these ones are again directional. So you can see here, there is the navy blue solid fabric in the corner and there's also a grey so that will be on the outside ring. So on my design the black is representing this and the navy blue is representing that. So the first step is to put a yellow square within a square. So I'm going to make four pink and yellow half square triangles and join those together. And it's looking a little bit lost at the moment and so I need to grow that just a little bit. And so now we need to surround that lovely little block with some more half square triangles. 
and I've taken the blue and green half square triangles and I've sewn the green together to form those arrowheads and they'll fit around that central square like that. And that's how it will fit in that space. So it's beginning to fill up that area. My one concern is that it's a little bit pale at the moment. It is meant to be a midnight garden, but then it's also a garden in the summer that's in full bloom. So I'll put the next round to that and hopefully I'll start to get the feeling I'm after. So there's quite a lot of dark in this next round and that's the design for it. You can see there's navy blue on the left and the black that indicates I'm going to be using the pink and navy blue floral for the background on the right and those greens finish off the points of the leaves in the flower so I'll sew that together and that's the ring around that inner block and as you can see now that dark outer is beginning to subdue those colours a little bit so I'm looking to try and create something that is dark and mysterious and, and quite romantic I think it's lovely to sit outside in the garden in the summer late at night but I don't want it to be gloomy or miserable or oppressive <laughs> so it's a fine line really I want it to be romantic that's what I'm going for so to get that feel is going to depend on whether I'm successful with my colour selections and we won't know that till I've completed the quilt on the left hand side where it's solid navy you can see there are two peacocks that have been fussy cut and on the right hand side there are two squares that haven't been fussy cut and I'll explain why. So fussy cutting, um, it's not something I do a lot of really but occasionally like in this case I get seduced by a fabric line. So this Paisley Peacock by Bethany Salt just called to me. I love the colours, I love the design, I love the peacocks. I wouldn't want peacocks in my own garden. I mean, I'm a frequent visitor to the National Trust properties and they say that they're messy and they wreck the garden and they are really noisy. So they look nice, but I wouldn't want one in my own garden. And I wanted to use that image of the peacock um, in all its glory. I wanted to showcase it. So I have cut those, the bigger ones, in five and a half inch squares, so they look lovely. But these smaller peacocks, they were more of a challenge to use because if you don't get the feathers in, I think they look a bit like a turkey. <laughs> so, sorry, Bethany, if you're watching this. And so it's a struggle really, how to use it to its best advantage. I also don't want to cut lots of little, well, three inch squares from the fabric and then disregard the rest or have odd pieces. And so this is why when I was using the smaller peacock shapes around block A, just to touch the corners, I only use the peacocks on the inner part of the quilt. On the outer, I just use some of the same fabric, but with a background without the peacocks on. And so, you know, if you are buying some of this lovely fabric with big designs on, you always have to bear in mind, don't you, how you will actually use that in your quilt. And now I'm going to sew those together and we'll have a look and see what that looks like. And so I've taken that central block and I have added the top row with the solid navy and the bottom row with the floral and the sides I've gone as far as I can before I'm adding those feature blocks. So I have the sides are constructed like that. I don't have to worry about this bottom corner. There's no direction in that. But the top one here and across there, I just have to make sure that those are going to fit around the block. So I want two touching at the bottom, two touching at the top, and then two on the left and two on the right. 
So I'll put those together and I'll show you what I mean. So if you have a look at the central block, you can see we have a peacock standing up in the centre and four surrounding that. And then if I take you down, you can see that in those corner blocks, there are two peacocks standing in the same direction. And that is also another drawback with fussy cutting. If you have directional fabric, then you have to be careful how you put your blocks together because I don't want my central peacock to be full of glory in the centre of the quilt and then to have other little peacocks <laughs> upside down around it. Um, sometimes it works, it doesn't matter if they're all in different ways, but um, I don't think so, not in this quilt. And that's how C block will fit. I've still got to put a piece on the top and the bottom of each block, all the sides, and I've just made a slight amendment to that. And these are the two pieces that I have to add to each of C block. And because that orange is so dominant, I'm going to make some three inch squares within squares with a navy and pink floral background and put an orange square in the centre there just to scatter it amongst the quilt. And this is going to be the layout for those two strips of fabric. I was originally going to put the yellow in the deep blue next to the solid blue triangle, but I'll show you why I changed my mind. So originally I was going to have a solid blue with a yellow square within a square there, but then you've got quite this dominant triangle here. But now I've decided to put an orange in the pink floral. It brings the orange out into the corners and I think it softens it, breaks it up a little bit. You'll see better at a distance. And so I think you can see there what a strange triangular shape that appears to be with that yellow within the navy blue. And if I take that out, you'll see how it softens. And that navy blue dominant triangle has disappeared now. And those orange, I think, look softer in that pink floral. So that's the decision I've gone with there. And that's the struggle I'm having with this quilt. I want it to be bright, but I don't want it to be garish. I want it to be dark, but I don't want it to be gloomy. So this, this fine struggle, this fine line that I'm trying to balance and we'll see how it goes. So I'll put those together and that will be C block finished. And I think another time in another quilt I'd quite like that triangular shape. So it's just in this occasion that I didn't think it works. And that's been one of the drawbacks of making a block at a time is that I don't see the overall picture until they're up on the wall next to each other. And then I'm just making slight adjustments. I have got some spare blocks, but I will use them in other projects. So I'm not worried about that. They are lovely. So they'll all go to good use at some point. So it is the midnight garden and it should be seen in the dark. And so it suddenly occurred to me to turn the lights off and then contrast and compare the two images and it was amazing really what I discovered how differently the colours look under the different lights. And this is how it looks in the daylight and I'll show you how it looks when I turn the lights off. That's the changes. You can see how the different colours are glowing now. And so the background of the quilt that really altered in the different lights. So in the daytime light, this was very dominant, but this was also quite distinctive, this navy blue background. But of a night time, when I turned off the lights, this almost disappeared, the floral disappeared almost completely. And it just looked a dark background. And I also noticed the orange, how that altered. In the daylight, the orange was really bright and dominant. But then in the night time, that stepped back a little bit and it was the yellow and the green 
that shot to the fore. And the way our eyes interpret colour was of interest to me, so I did a little bit of research and I've made some notes to share. So it says, we have two kinds of light sensitive organs in the back of our eyes. One is rod shaped and the other one is cone shaped. So I have heard of that expression before, rods and cones. And it says cones help you to see in bright light and the rods help you to see in the darker light. And so it's talking about a dim light. I mean, in the very dark light, everything just appears silver and gray and black. But where there is a little bit of light, that's where these cones and rods help us to see the different colors and so why some are more visible than others. And so it said green sits in the middle of the color spectrum and both the rods and the cones can see that equally so they can interpret that as a color to us. But on a practical note, looking at the quilt in the dark has made me realize that I want to make sure that there's enough of those little yellow and orange spots dotted around the outside of the quilt because they really do help to make this quilt move. And if you think of it, it will be in a bedroom probably on a bed and you might be seeing it in poor light or dim light. And so I'm considering that now when I'm adding colors together to make these blocks. So when I first started making this quilt, I made a huge selection of fabric from my stash that I may or may not use. They just all went together. But after watching the way that the colors behave differently to one another and in the light and dark, there are colors now that I am going to disregard. So I'll put those away and I'll use them another day in another quilt. So I'm going to put away all of those greens. I'm just going to use the two green fabrics that I've used so far in this quilt. And I'm going to put away the whites. I won't be using them in this quilt. I'm also going to put those pinks and blue away. And that now leaves me with this fabric. So it's all been used elsewhere in the quilt. There's hardly any of the orange floral left. And so this is the design that I finally decided on. And I think that looks really lovely together, quite smart really. And so now I'll show you how I construct those blocks. So block D is a little three by three block. It sits on the corner and I want your eye to be dragged towards that, but I don't want it to overpower the bigger blocks that are in the center. It's to sort of set the centerpiece off. So I'm going to have dark navy, solid navy, around the edge of this quilt. And so it's sort of pushing all of the color into the middle of the quilt. That's what I'm hoping will happen. Um, but then I also have to think about the blocks that it's going to be touching on the right and on the top as it sits in the corner. Um, and that made me sort of change my mind a couple of times. So some more spare blocks, like I say, I will use them at another time in another quilt. Nothing will go to waste, but um, I am making more blocks than I normally would in this way of designing a quilt. Those are the layout of the blocks, a three by three. So we've got three squares within squares. We have one small square surrounded by the floral, two half square triangles, and then three three inches. And it's okay. I am aware that I am showing you the placement of these blocks and one of those half square triangles in the blue and the floral is upside down. I didn't sew it upside down. <laughs> and when I'm putting the details on my community page for you to follow if you want to, they're not upside down on there. So it's all right, it's okay. And those are the details and you'll find those on my community page. So that's D block in its place and I'm going to start working on E block next. So you can see there are already those three blocks on each side. And I know which colors now I'm going to be working with. 
I want to bring some of those tiny orange and yellow squares within squares around the quilt. Maybe add some green, that would look quite nice. But that's for next week. So I haven't yet designed blocks E and F, but I know the colour choices I'm going to make. And that has been made by the way the fabric has worked together in the dim light. So there were some pieces that I've thought, oh, I definitely want to use that again or make the most of that. So I'll show you those next week and incorporating other bits of green that I hadn't intended to before, but I will now after seeing that the way that behaves in the dim light. And so that will be for next week. So if you're still with me, I'd like to thank you very much for your company and please take really good care of yourselves. And I'm going to leave you with a shot of the quilt in the dim light. And I'll see you next week. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.